Most of us have had the experience of running into someone we once knew and feeling like or dislike, warmth or caution, before we consciously register who the person is. This is one example of how perception puts binders on us. Even the people we do not recognize are usually coupled in our minds with pleasant or unpleasant experiences. Based on these memories, concepts arise. We often don't even have to know a person well in order to develop fixed ideas about them. This makes it very difficult to open new possibilities and experiences. A friend of mine had a son in third or fourth grade. His teacher asked the class what color are apples. The students responded with answers like red, green, and gold, but my friend's son raised his hand and said apples are white. No, the teacher told him, that's incorrect. There are no white apples, but the boy insisted until the teacher became quite impatient. Finally, the boy asked her, when you cut an apple open, what color is it inside? Of course, the answer is white. This young child had a mind free enough to look beyond superficial perceptions and respond to the question directly from his experience. A similar principle is at work in the so-called trick questions that sometimes appear in magazines or circulate on the internet. Does Canada have a 4th of July? Many of us Americans would immediately say no. Yet on closer reflection, can Canadians do skip right from July 3rd to July 5th, this wouldn't be right. Canada does have a 4th of July, but not the annual event we've come to picture. When we hear the term in the United States, we're so identified with our own context that the 4th of July can cease to exist for us in any order. In this example, a neutral date on the calendar has acquired a single narrow and flexible meaning in our minds. This is how we approach reality in general. When our perception is stronger than our mindfulness, we believe people, things, and sometimes even ideas are solid and unchanging. We see ourselves as solid too, which is the source of much of our suffering. The notion of impermanence, the fact that everything in our experience is constantly changing, material objects, relationships, systems of government, no matter how long any of these seem to last in human terms, Every one of them arises, dwells in a state of constant flux for a period of time, and then passes away. We witness the impertinent nature of the world and everything in it, from one moment to the next. Why, then, have we come to believe so strongly that everything is solid? We reason is that our perception is unable to keep up with the rapid pace of events. We can understand how things by looking at how movies work, the film comprises millions of frames, each one capturing a fraction of a second in time. When these frames are run rapidly through the projector, they create an illusion of continuous movement. We watch the stories they tell and get completely lost in the continuous movement. It all seems so real, but if slowed down the film, you'd see that each frame tells its own story. The illusion of motion depends entirely on the rapidly moving frame, which each frame is replaced by the next. Meanwhile, the light passing through the film and projecting it onto the screen appears entirely stable, yet it's driven by an alternating electrical current. The alternation happens at such great speed that we perceive the light as steady and continuous. Distance is another phenomena that protects the illusion of sol solidity. Typically, we don't look at things very closely. If we take something seemingly very solid, say a fragment of gravel, and look at it under a microscope, you'll see an extraordinary display of movement and change. The way we think of gravel is entirely at odds with the evident reality. We don't need a microscope to experiment with this phenomena. Just look at something in the distance, perhaps a home. At first, you'll see it as a shape of certain colors, or lights of colors. As you move closer, you'll begin to see the different elements of this home. The windows are quite distinct from the roof, for example. The closer you get, the more clearly you see that the house is a composed of countless elements. If you get close enough, you'll cease to perceive it as a house. It will become a field of texture and color. By this time, you'll know a great deal more about the house than you did at first glance. The same is true for every solid object we perceive around us. 
airplanes, highways, furniture, other people. Without mindfulness, our experience of these things at surface level, we don't see the incredible complexity and interplay of changing elements that goes to make up the chair of that person. Albert Einstein once said, we should take care not to make the intellect our God. It has, of course, powerful muscles, but no personality. You've been listening to The Nature of Perception, and I've been your host, Teacher Teresa F. Koch. Namaste. Mm -hmm.